Are you wondering how to create a project plan in PowerPoint? Well, you've come to the right video because today I'm gonna to be showing you step-by-step -step how to create your project plan in PowerPoint from scratch. And it's gonna be a very simple and quick process. So as you can see here, we've got a blank slide. That's obviously what you will have in front of you. Now, I will admit that there's actually three different ways to do this. I'm gonna be walking you through each one. Each has their pros and cons, and we'll discuss those throughout this video. So the first thing I would suggest is that you click the insert button at the top and you're gonna be looking for this table button. Now you can select uh, or you can kind of hover over this grid here and that will enable you to select the rows and columns of your kind of requirements. But I would actually, actually suggest that you use the insert table button. It's a lot kind of easier to, to work with in my, my uh, experience. Now, of course, how many columns and rows you need is gonna completely depend on the depth and level of project plan you want to create. But just as an example in this video today, I'm gonna to use around eight columns and 16 rows. Now, you may want to expand this further, um, but this will give you a, a basic um, uh, grid to work from if you like. So the first thing I'm gonna do, you've noticed that I've got some formatting already applied. Now you could use that in your project plan, but it doesn't look particularly professional. So what I'm gonna do is, for the purpose of this video, is I'm gonna get rid of this green. Now, if you're creating a table from a blank PowerPoint, you probably won't have this formatting, so just bear that in mind. So in order to, for me to get rid of it, I'm just gonna put an all border, and I'm gonna completely remove the shading, and that will just give us a plain table, and that's probably what you have in front of you here today. So what I would then do is I would move on to actually building out the various different component to the project plan. So at the top, I'm going to put in something like a, um, so I need to, I believe I've got some some blank uh, text at the moment. So I need this as, as black or it's not going to appear. So I'm going to put this as the project start date. So that will give us a, you know, an, an area to, to enter that information. Um, and I'm also going to put a project end date uh, here. So the idea would be, you know, let's say Today's date, um, I believe I'm recording this on the 8th of November. So as you can see, I need to just quickly put this formatting um, across. So what I did there is I just selected that cell and dragged across with the format painter. Um, and that has given me the ability to have the same formatting. So I want to make this a little bit smaller and this a little bit smaller as well. I'm going to select all of the cells. We're going to make this a little bit smaller. So and I, won't want, I don't want this in bold. So you just get the idea here. At the top, I would suggest putting a project start and a project end date. So for now, let's say this, this is gonna be the planned uh, date. So I'm gonna say the projected end date is the 1st of January, 2022. So let's get rid of that. So now we have just some information at the top. You know, you might want to put this in some, some other, other color as well, uh, just to kind of differentiate it. So we could maybe even go back to the green that we had initially, but that just gives you kind of an idea of how to, uh, you know, get the, some of the key information in at the top. So I, what was that color I used? Uh, I can't find it now. There we go. Now, what you should do from the, here on in is basically build out the various columns that you're going to need to track your uh, project. So if you're you're obviously running your project plan through PowerPoint, then this is what you'll need to update. So first and foremost, we're going to have something known as the work breakdown structure number. And that just gives us a, an almost a reference point. And actually, before I do that, I'm just going to select all of the cells. So I left clicked in one of the cells, I'm going to drag over. And I just want to change the text to, we're going to make it a 12. And we won't bold anything for now. Although actually, having said that, Oh, undo. We're going to want all of this in bold as well, because these are going to be the column headers. So let's put that in bold. So here we're going to have the different work break, breakdown structure numbers. So we'll start with number one. And here we're going to have task name. Here we're going to have status. So that'll be the status for each task. We're going to have an assigned to. So, you know, is that uh, an individual or a team? We're going to have a start date for each um, each individual, individual task. Naturally, next will come an end date for the task. We would like a duration, so we can see in terms of you know dates, we can see the, the, the length of each task, and then we'll also want something like a comment, and that will just give us the ability to add some additional comments. And let's make this a little bit wider, just so that uh, there's more space for comments to be added. So I've left clicked in the bottom cell, I've dragged up with my left click, and I'm going to go on layout, and on the width, I'm gonna put this up. 
So you'll see I'm just clicking that and it's expanding the centimeters and that's just making that expand out. So here we go. So let's put this in the middle. Now, what you can also do here is we've got some bit of coloring already. I'd also differentiate this out as well. So I'm gonna put some shading in. I quite like a, a, a light gray, just to give us that kind of idea what's the column headers. And we are looking good. Now, you you know, you might want to move this over if you know you could have that, depending on what, what you like, but you know, you get the idea there. So now we just need to enter some some tasks, and obviously that's going to completely depend on your project. For the for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to put in some kind of basic um, tasks that you would might you know expect on a project. So for instance, I'm just going to put in some um, some high 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 level tasks, and so if I can spell correctly, and I'm actually going to need to put this a little bit bigger, aren't I? Because this isn't going to work. So same process, left click at the bottom, drag a drag up to the top, table, design, no we don't need that, we need layout and we want to expand the width to just give us some, just give us some room really. So we're then going to want to look for this little grid icon and then we can kind of move it across. So that's going to be, you know, work breakdown and stretch number one. Now if you've got a subtask, that would obviously be 1.1. So a subtask here could be research. So I'm going to do research and what we're going to want to do here as well is we just want to make sure that this, um, you know, is, is indented if you like. So we need to look for, we could put this in the middle actually, that might be a good way of doing it. So we could do something like that. So I've just clicked the, the, uh, the center just to show you, just to show the parent child relationship. Although you could use the indenting functionality as well, which is up here. So if I just put that back, then you could use this and that will do essentially do the same thing. So that, that gives us our kind of high level task and our subtasks as well. I'm just going to put another another couple just to give you an idea. So stakeholder mapping would maybe another one. I'm going to indent that as well. And then we could put in, you know, another high level task. So um, project planning, for instance, that would obviously be number two. This would be 1.2. Um, and let's put in some, some, you know, scope and goal setting is another subtask here. We could have budget as another one. So of course, this is going to completely depend on your project and, uh, you know, what, what tasks that you have, how you're kind of managing your project. So, so just bear that in mind. This is obviously not going to be exactly the same, but you get the idea here of, of how I'm pulling this together and what you kind of need to do in terms of the formatting as well. So we've got an execution. Um, so that's going to be a, that's going to be a th to, that's going to be a three, excuse me. Here we want to do some status and tracking. Uh, we can also want to do things like uh, project updates. And I think another thing is we'll probably want to, you know, have some KPIs of some kind. Let's just put that in there. And then we're going to put some project performance and monitoring. And then we'll put project closure at the bottom here. So. We've got a basic project plan coming along here. These need to be indented. This would be 3.1, 3.2. Now, if you're working with Excel, obviously it's gonna be a little bit different. You've got some other tools and functionality you can benefit from, you know, your drag and drops if you like, but you don't, you don't really get that here, unfortunately. So maybe you do want to, to create a project plan in Excel if you can. And if you do want to do that, I'll drop a, a link in the in the description down below, which links to you know how you can create a project plan in Excel. It's another video I've pulled together, which might help you as well. Just kind of bear that in mind. Um, so let's put quality deliverables in here. Deliverables, and let's also put I don't know effort tracking, effort and cost tracking here. So just some you know some some subtasks of the of the parent parent task here. Um, another thing I quite like to do, so we've got the grey here, let's actually put this into a darker grey. So I'm going to go back to table design, I'm going to make this shading a little bit darker. And the reason for that is I'd like to put these in a colour as well, just to kind of make these stand out a little bit. And you can see, that way you can kind of see the the, the, the main um, tasks of the, of, the, uh, of the project or the parent tasks if you like. So... Um, what was this color here? I missed that one. So that would be here, would be this color. Is that, was that the one I used? No, it wasn't. It was that one. So it's a dark gray, this one. So again, we'd need that 
here. You get the idea what I'm doing. Um, but it just gives that, it breaks it out. And so if anyone comes to kind of see this uh, project or you know, a stakeholder opens it up, they know exactly, it just gives them that kind of visual, visual differentiation. So of course, now the next thing you need to do is put in some statuses. So obviously, um, you might even want to add a key actually, which kind of gives you know anyone updating this an idea of, of what statuses to to include. Obviously, you're going to have things like in progress. You're going to have things like on hold, um, not started perhaps, and you'll also have things like complete. Now, of course, that doesn't make sense in the context of this project. You wouldn't have you wouldn't have be complete in project planning if you've not even done conception and, and initiation yet but you get the idea just these are the kind of statuses you'd want to include here and perhaps add a key to the side you know that's had all of the different statuses so anyone using this resource would know what to put in here we're going to put the project manager you know this is where you li literally just specify who's who's in charge of it you know this could be the product team uh, this could be uh, I don't know, um, another stakeholder that you have within your organization. Um, you know, for, for instance, down here, it could be the quality team, or, you know, that kind of thing here. Now, start date and end date will be the dates of your project. So let's just put any random dates in here just to give you the the idea. Actually thinking about it, let's put the, the project start date in here. It's the, first, it's the first part of the project. So naturally that would make sense for those to align. Um, and the project closer date would be you know, 1st of uh, January, so it'd be here. And obviously you could just put your dates in here like that, in that kind of format. I've done that wrong, as you can see, but you get the idea. You just put in the start date and end date for each task as you go through them and as the as they kind of happen. And then by the end, you'll have the, the end date and that should be the project end date at the top. Now duration, that is really a, uh, a calculation on these two columns or the former columns, I should say, so the start and end date. So that would be something like one day, as you can imagine. If this was 10, 11, uh, 20, 21, and this was 20, 11, 20, 21, then this would obviously be 10 days. So that just gives you an idea of what to put in the duration. And here is somewhere for you to enter the comments. So this could be something as simple as um, uh, completed on time requires work on I don't know uh, requires work on status report just you get the idea just just somewhere to put and to enter free text on each of the tasks I'm gonna save it obviously always good practice so yeah that's the main way really of creating a, a project plan in PowerPoint the other option so I've done this via as you can see a table functionality I'm actually gonna duplicate this slide right click there duplicate and I'll delete this off so the other, that, that's the table functionality. The other way is using the Excel spreadsheet functionality also available in PowerPoint. And to do that, you simply click the insert button again. And under table, you might've seen this earlier, is you click the Excel spreadsheet button. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna open up this kind of interface here. And as you'll see, this is Microsoft Excel. So that probably, I've just gone through the table method I quite like this as an option. Um, let me just delete that because it's gone a bit funny. Um, I quite like, like this as an option because you can put in things like formulas. And of course, for things like the duration column, that's gonna be really, really handy. So again, you do things like, you know, work breakdown structure. I've just controlled, controlled B there to get that in bold. You'd have task name and it would literally follow the same process. You're doing exactly the same thing, but the benefit of using this Excel is that you can use, as I said, formulas. So. And when it's finished, it's going to look like this. It's a complete drag and, you know, pick it up and drop it wherever you like. So maybe a little bit neater as well. I don't know. It depends what you, how you want to run with this and how you want to, you know, work with your, with your project plan. Um, but you could, you could start adding formulas and, you know, that's, you know, you could use stuff like equals, you know, cell A1, take away A2. And if you've got dates, that can be really, really useful, especially for like the duration column, um, et cetera. So that's the second option. And the third one before we finish is you can use the import functionality. And what that essentially does is, well, in order for you to be able to do that, you almost have, you, well, you do have to have an existing project plan in another data set. So for instance, you would have already have built your project plan in Excel. However, if you have done that, that means you can all, automatically import it into a uh, PowerPoint and that can be really useful if you want to show it to a client or another stakeholder and you didn't want it in that kind of Excel um, you know um, 
view and you know maybe you want to embed it within a, a, a PowerPoint presentation for instance to one of your stakeholders so to do that you would basically you'd be looking for insert and you'd click the object button now here what you want to do is create from file and then you essentially click browse and you find you find your resource so I'm actually just doing that now you won't be able to see but all I'm doing is selecting that Excel document I'm hitting OK once it's selected I'm hitting OK and you'll see it's brought in the entire project plan that I've created in Excel already and again it's drag and drop and if you double click into it it enables you to update it as you would in Excel, but it's in PowerPoint. So, you know, really, really great. And if you, un you click out of it, it goes back into this kind of drag and drop view. So, you know, really useful. Um, this is based on my how to create a project plan in Excel, Excel tutorial. As I said earlier, that's another video on my channel. I will drop a link to that, as I said earlier, in the description below. So if you are interested, do take a look at that. But that really was the three main ways. And, and I really do hope that this video was useful. If it was, please do hit the like button. That tells me I should continue creating videos like this. And if this, you know, this video was particularly useful, then do subscribe to my channel as I'm going to be releasing more videos like this uh, as the weeks go on. And with that said, I hope you have an excellent day.